Hello and welcome to part two of the chems of Fallout. I previously covered all, well, almost all, of the addictive chems of the Fallout series and I'm following it up with a video on the chems that are not addictive. This will be a long video, so I am just going to get straight into it. The antidote, which appears in the first Fallout, Fallout 2 and Tactics, is encountered fairly early on because of early interactions with rad scorpions. In Tactics, it is called the Poison Antidote and is shown in syringe form, but performs the same function. It can come from a variety of sources, like Razlo in the first Fallout, if you bring him a rad scorpion tail. It is in a large corked bottle with a label that is reminiscent of 19th and early 20th century ethers and pharmaceutical concoctions, which give it an old western vibe. The bottle is most likely a repurposed bottle, and the whole thing is consumed when one has been poisoned. Antidotes negate the effects of poisons and toxins, either by preventing them from being absorbed, binding to and neutralizing them, keeping the toxin from breaking down into more toxic metabolites, or by preventing them from being widely circulated throughout the body. Of course, the kind of toxin or poison will also determine the kind of antidote, since there are different pathways for them to harm the body, so it is not a one-size-fits-all. In Fallout, the antidote does seem to be a universal antidote, since it cures the venom from rad scorpion stings, as well as the minor poisoning the player can get in Fallout 2 when acting as a fluffer. Don't think about that one too hard, because the implications could be a bit disturbing. As a reminder, I won't talk about Radaway in this video, because I covered it in my previous chems video. Radaway is addictive in the first three games, but hasn't been since Bethesda bought the franchise. That is, except for the Bear Brothers in the Fallout 3 DLC The Pit. As a side note, I would like to see this become addictive again in newer games. Radex is another iconic chem in Fallout that spans all the games. They appear as red and yellow capsule pills, and in later games are simply shown as a brown bottle with an official looking label, which definitely looks like it was produced and sold like a form of medication. It is stackable, so taking it several times in succession will lead to greater resistance. Radex is said to increase the body's resistance to radiation, which has no real world analog. We have potassium iodide, whose purpose is very specific, in that it overloads the body with iodine to keep the thyroid from picking up and storing radioactive iodine. There is no other kind of medication that actively reduces the amount of radiation when exposure occurs. Perhaps rather than just merely blocking more radiation, it stimulates the bodily mechanisms that repair radiation damage, giving the impression that it does block radiation. These types of medications are called colony stimulating factors that cause stem cells in the bone marrow to produce more blood cells, which can aid in recovery as cells die from radiation exposure. Radex was more potent in previous games, since in the first Fallout, taking it more than twice was useless because you would get 100% protection from two doses. Tactics went even further by making it possible to overdose if the Radex is taken too quickly or taken with other chems. That is a cool mechanic, and it would be interesting to see that in future games. Once again, this chem features in every Fallout game and is the life-saving stim pack. It comes in many varieties, like the auto-inject stim pack, super stim pack, and ultra stim pack. Stim pack is short for stimulation delivery package, and apparently the delivery part is silent. The game describes it as injecting a so-called soup of healing medication that boosts the body's own regenerative properties. The general stim pack is a syringe with a gauge on top that according to the wiki is used to identify the state of the contents in the syringe. I don't really understand how this is the case. I could see it maybe reflecting the volume of the contents, but given that there is a small window in the syringe itself, some simple markings on the side would suffice if it were in fact tracking volume. Give me your thoughts as to what the gauge may be measuring in the comments. When considering what stim packs could be, once again we are left only with speculation. There is a good chance that within the soup of medications that there is some kind of stem cell based medication designed for rapid cellular regeneration. However. It is important to note that stim packs do not heal scarring, which stem cell treatments will actually do. So perhaps there is not any sort of stem cell treatment contained within the stim packs. 
Super stim packs have an additional vial of healing cams and a leather strap meant to keep it in place. There's so much healing agent in the super stim that it actually causes damage to the body for a period of time after initial healing. In the original fallouts, you could assassinate people by simply injecting them with a super stim, which is something that I would really like to see make an appearance again in future games. Super stims are only found in Fallout 1 through Tactics, skipping Fallout 3 and appearing again in Fallout New Vegas. It is absent in Fallout 4, but can be found in Fallout 76 in the Nuclear Winter game mode. Interestingly, Fallout 3 has an unused inventory icon for super stims, so at some point they were expected to feature in the game, but were cut early enough that a model was never made. Super stims are also said by the fan unfavorite, Myron, from Fallout 2, to be able to be made with a stim pack, a Nuka Cola, and a Mute Fruit. This is verified in New Vegas, where the player can craft a super stim with the same ingredients. It really makes me wonder what these healing factors actually are when all it takes is a Mute Fruit and a Nuka Cola. The negative effects of super stims in Fallout New Vegas are some penalties to strength and agility, but in the first fallouts, a condition known as Stimpack Sickness would apply to your character that would decrease HP. Ultra Stimpacks are found in Fallout Tactics and consist of two Stimpacks, one that is injected like we expect, and the other in an IV bag to provide a prolonged drip to the player. Fallout 76 has a Stimpack Extra and an Expired Stimpack that are both less potent than a normal Stimpack and a Stimpack Diffuser that releases an aerosol form that can heal a number of people in a given area. This cannot heal crippled limbs though, so it seems some of the effectiveness is lost in this form as opposed to intravenous or intramuscular injection. In Fallout 2, there is a form of alcohol called Alcohol Z that is a synthetic alcohol. It is not even an item that can be acquired and can only be ordered at the parlor room bar in Vault City where it can just be ordered and increase the player's drinking stat. Healing powder is found in Fallout 2, New Vegas, and Tactics and can be found in a simple bag. Narg from Fallout 2 is said to munch on healing powder, implying that it is taken orally. It is made from a brock flower and a xander root mixed together and has the same effect as a stim pack while reducing perception by two. Although there are a number of real world plants and herbs that can help the body heal and recover slightly faster than if one were to go untreated, the xander root and brock flower used to make the healing powder must have more advanced healing properties than anything we know of, since healing powder can be quite effective. It is the healing element of choice for the legion, since they largely eschew chems. The jet antidote is found in Fallout 2 and does exactly what the name implies. The player can come in possession of two jet antidotes in the course of completing a side quest. Once the player delivers a sample of jet to Dr. Troy in Vault City, along with information as to how it is made from Myron, the player receives two antidotes. One can be given to Doc Johnson in Reading to cure the miners, and the other can be used by the player. When administered, it is not consumed by the player, so theoretically, one can use Jet and then cure themselves of addiction via the antidote as much as they wish. The antidote unravels the new Reno plan to exert control over Redding and throw the conflict over the city into Vault City's favor. Now, this entry really blurs the line between chem and food, or maybe the line between acceptable and insanity, you can decide. If the Chosen One in Fallout 2 spends too much time in irradiated areas, they will grow a sixth toe known as the Mutated Toe. I hope you can see where this is going. Having the two will automatically disqualify you for Vault City citizenship, so the most logical thing to do would be to have it removed. Having it surgically removed at an auto dock will place it in the player's inventory, where it can be used like a consumable item, but has effects associated with it. If the player eats it, the game simply states, you ate your f***ing toe, and you permanently lose 3 HP and get poisoned. Some in-game characters will tell you that it is a secret weapon that can be used against Frank Horrigan, but it doesn't do anything special other than lower his HP by 3, so I wouldn't rely on the mighty mutant toe if I were you. 
A futuristic looking container of fluid is what makes up Hypo, a chem from a Fallout 2 special encounter. It instantly restores 75 to 100 hit points with no side effects, making it the best healing item in the game. It can be found as part of the Federation Crash Site Special Encounter and be found on the bodies on the ground. It is an obvious reference to the Hypo Spray from Star Trek, as the whole Easter egg pays homage to Star Trek. The Trauma Pack is found in Fallout Tactics only and is specifically for major trauma. The chem appears to be a pressurized cylinder that is likely containing much of the healing chem as well as a pack that could hold a variety of bandages and other medical items to address major trauma. I think it might be safe to say that the main healing agents are probably a derivative of the stim pack healing chems, just increased in potency like super or ultra stims. After the initial healing and boost to strength, endurance, and damage resistance, the player experiences penalties to all the aforementioned attributes. Alien Biogel is featured in the Fallout 3 DLC Mothership Zeta and is represented by a strange blue glowing cylinder. How it is accessed is not clear. It seems like the top or bottom detaches somehow, and although we never see the gel outside of the container, the name obviously implies what kind of substance it is. It also has a chance at a random effect that can be either a penalty or a bonus to things such as intelligence, perception, endurance, agility, and giving or taking radiation. This is a pretty cool idea, implying that although humans can derive some health benefit, there are a number of other side effects because of the difference between aliens and humans. It would also imply that on some basic levels, our biochemistry is similar, which is interesting. I wasn't able to find a pop culture reference or similarity, but if you guys know of one, tell me in the comments. There's also the adapted biogel, which is crafted by Elliot, who was a pre-war US soldier abducted by aliens before the Great War. It offers much more HP replenishment, even surpassing stim packs with the same random effects of a normal biogel. There are a number of chems that one can receive from ants in Fallout 3 and New Vegas. Ant Nectar is addictive though, so it really should have been showcased in my previous video, but I suck at my job, so we're talking about it now. The Ant Nectar is produced by the ants and increases strength while decreasing intelligence and charisma. Although the addiction chance is low, consuming 8 straight will guarantee addiction due to the Uman effect. Uman. Uman. U-M-O-N. This essentially tracks how often certain chems have been consumed in a period of time, and if a threshold is met, addiction occurs. Ants are known to collect nectar from plants, like many pollinating insects, but they don't create the nectar. So how they are collecting the nectar when they are so much bigger is a mystery. In Fallout 3, there is a cut effect known as ant vision that alters the player's vision by tinting and blurring it although it is unknown if this was meant to be a boost or detriment to the player. There's also Fire Ant Nectar, which increases agility by 4, making it the chem with the highest agility boost in the game. It also offers fire damage resistance, and is somehow not addictive like normal nectar. Ant Queen Pheromones are another ant-based chem that is a strong aphrodisiac, that increases charisma by 3 with a penalty to intelligence and perception. Although much rarer than the other ant chems, it does not carry a chance for addiction. The versions of Mentats that are Brilliant Berry, Grape, and Orange are the non-addictive versions of the well-known chem and only found in Fallout 3, in their non-addictive state. Grape increases charisma, Berry increases intelligence, and Orange increases perception. They can be received from the National Archives if the player redeems the Archive prize voucher so it's good that the pre-war civic systems were not rewarding people with addictive substances. Although, given that it is the Fallout universe, I am actually a little bit surprised. Perhaps the developers thought that these three attributes, intelligence, perception, and charisma, were all different kinds of intelligence, and so split them up with different Mentats versions. Blood packs are found in all fallouts from the Fallout 3 onwards. They are said by the game to be collections of blood from before the Great War, which would make the blood incredibly old. Blood banks store blood for six weeks before throwing it out, 
and some studies seem to indicate that blood older than three weeks may have adverse side effects. Blood also cannot be frozen because it destroys the blood cells, so there is definitely a shelf life for blood, which Fallout massively overshoots. In Fallout 3 and New Vegas, they give one point of HP, although in Fallout 3, the hematophage perk will allow the player to get 20 HP out of these puppies. It is also obvious by the sound made when the player consumes the blood that it is not injected intravenously like one would expect, but is drunk because of course it is. In Fallout 4 and 76, you get a baseline 50 HP from the blood, but in survival mode, there is a 7% chance of getting a disease from consuming them. My guess would be that the disease is from the incredibly long amount of time they've been sitting out and decomposing, rather than any inadequate screening that allowed for diseased blood to be drawn. These can often be found in first aid kits, which absolutely should not be a thing. There are some variants like the glowing packs, which are in Fallout 76, which offer more HP boosts and increase your rad resistance somehow. One would think a green glowing blood pack would be absolutely brimming with radiation due to radioluminescence, but apparently not, and it makes you really wonder where this blood was drawn from. There's also irradiated blood, which gives an HP boost while irradiating the player, which that, that at least makes sense. Cave fungus is found in Fallout 3, New Vegas, and the Far Harbor DLC for Fallout 4, and in 76. It is found in caves and represented by a reddish mushroom cap, which looks kind of similar to shiitake mushrooms. They decrease the player's radiation levels and can be used in Fallout New Vegas to craft Hydra. The irradiated versions are green and instead of decreasing radiation levels, elevate them when eaten. It is interesting to note that fungi have a proclivity of taking up radioactive forms of cesium and can act as biomarkers for contamination. It can also make them dangerous to eat if there has been some sort of radiological leak and the mushrooms absorb much higher amounts than normal. That makes the irradiated fungi actually quite faithful to what we know about fungi and how they interact with radioactive isotopes. From the Lonesome Road add-on, Fiery Purgative is a concoction made of peppers that are so spicy that it cleanses the body of toxins and even radiation. So if any of you are struggling with radiation sickness, just down some ghost peppers and according to Fallout, you will be fine. Although alcohol is used in the making of the chem, the chem itself is not addictive. Antivenom is found in New Vegas and does exactly what one would think, removing the poison condition that a player can get from the myriad of creatures that carry venom. It is a simple chem with one use, but at one time the developers had planned for anti-venoms of every kind of venomous creature. This was eventually simplified into one generic anti-venom that will cure all of them, but shows that the developers wanted to be a bit more faithful to the real world, but game development had the final say. Anti-venom is interesting in how it works, as the process involves extracting venom from venomous creatures and then injecting it in low doses into domestic animals. These animals will produce antibodies that will neutralize the venom and the animal's blood is drawn and these antibodies are filtered out to make the anti-venom. Blood Shield is introduced in the Honest Hearts DLC in New Vegas and is one of many naturally created chems that were introduced in New Vegas. It is designed specifically to remove poisons from the player in addition to increasing the player's poison resistance. It can remove all types of poison which seems to be a theme among the antidotes in the Fallout series. It is the best chem at removing poison and increasing resistance. It is interesting to note that one can build tolerances to certain kinds of poisons by subjecting the body to non-lethal doses of the poison. This does not work, however, for toxins or poisons that do not easily leave the body and build up over time like heavy metal poisoning. It would be interesting if the poison resistance part of this cam had some sort of relation to that real world phenomenon. Cat Eye is one of my preferred New Vegas cams as it increases visibility in low light. It is administered in pill form and has a bottle and label that makes it seem like it was mass produced prior to the Great War. Its effects also work in daylight, 
simply making the daylight even brighter and washed out. This would indicate that perhaps the main function of the chem is to dilate the pupils to a great degree, which would have a similar, albeit not as drastic effect in the real world. Fixer is only shown in New Vegas and does what the name implies, it fixes your addiction problems, you little druggie. While not terribly common, it can remove any addiction suffered by the player, but will cause bouts of confusion, double vision, and nausea, which are known side effects. This is very similar to a chem that will be covered later in this video, Addictol, and I will get into some of the real world comparisons there. It is interesting to note, however, that this chem developed by MedTech has the name MedTech misspelled as MedTex on the package. And a terminal entry in Fallout 4 discusses how Addictol replaced Fixer in the MedTech product line. This may be due to the fact that the player character will experience the whooshing sounds and blurred vision that is usually a hallmark of being poisoned for a period of time after taking Fixer. Addictol does not have these same effects and may be why it replaced Fixer. It is also interesting to note that the chemist perk actually makes the period of time the character deals with the visual and auditory issues even longer, so be aware of that. New Vegas' DLC Dead Money introduces a craftable chem made from the killer cloud itself. Ghost Sight is a chem that alters the user's ability to see in the dark, but unlike Cat Eye, it gives everything a green hue. It can actually be used with Cat Eye, and the two colors will combine with slightly enhanced night vision. It is a lot more common than Cat Eye or Nuka Cola Quartz, which will also enhance night vision as the materials are common in Dead Money. The only ingredient is Cloud Residue, which, rather paradoxically, does not cause any harmful effects to the player when used to craft this consumable, so perhaps something about the heating process breaks down the toxic elements of the cloud. In the Honest Hearts DLC we get another tribal made chem called the Healing Poultice. This looks like the same sack as the healing powder, but the poultice is a much more potent healing ointment that is specifically designed for more severe trauma and broken limbs. Apparently the healing process can be very painful, so the user will get an agility penalty for a period of time while the ointment is working. In hardcore mode, it can be one of the few ways to heal a crippled limb that does not involve going to a doctor. Mushroom Cloud is unique to New Vegas and is shown as a consumable food item like iguana bits or squirrel on a stick. It is, however, made of a combination of gumdrops, sugar bombs, and night stalker egg and increases the player's hit points and action points. While this combination of ingredients leaves me very confused, and the in-game portrayal of it even more confused, apparently it gets its name from a real-world recipe from the Vault Dweller Survival Guide and similar to one found in the Vault Dweller's cookbook. Tim Kane also has a version of the recipe posted on his blog, although it is regrettably bereft of Night Stalker eggs. New Vegas' DLC Old World Blues gives us the best name of all the chems, Night Stalker Squeezins. This is not made how you might initially expect, as it is processed out of Night Stalker blood, and increases perception, sneak, poison resistance, HP, and radiation levels. This seems to coincide with the attributes of Night Stalkers themselves, who are the result of Big MT science gone wrong. So maybe enough Night Stalker squeezins will start making some human Night Stalker hybrids, but only if we're lucky. Lonesome Road gives us another chem called Rushing Waters, which is, in the simplest form, just water with some jet mixed in. Apparently the amount of jet is dilute enough that it will not cause addiction but it will increase hit points and drastically increase your attack speed by 50%. So that methamphetamine is definitely doing something. This chem cannot be found and can only be crafted, though the divide provides ample opportunities to get the ingredients. Honest Hearts hits again with a chem made from the sacred Detura root. This chem physically hardens the user's skin and makes them less prone to take damage from combat. My wife recently got a new knife set that is super sharp, and I'm thinking I need to craft some of this just for her. Detura Root can be taken by the player and will cause a visually altered experience which cannot be cured by anything other than the Detura Antidote, as the normal antidote will not work. For this reason, it is used in ritualistic and shamanistic practices. The Detura Hide uses the root and combines it with Wonder Glue to gain its effect 
which is such a strange combination that I don't really know what to do with that newfound information except to mention it here. Honest Hearts is not done blessing us with chems, and the weapon binding ritual may arguably be the best of them all. It is an important chem when preparing warriors for battle as it deadens the users to pain and gives a rush and bloodlust similar to Psycho. This means that melee and unarmed attacks are boosted for some time and crippled limbs are healed. When the player takes the chem, there's text that reads, You have sacrificed a portion of your life's blood to become one with your weapon. Your eyes will be keen, your limbs will not break, and your claws will strike like thunder. Fight only with your hands, or the weapons of your hands, to know this glory in combat. This chem is very powerful considering it is not addictive, and the only penalty is a very small amount of HP loss. It also blurs the player's vision a bit, likely giving the impression of the rush or adrenaline associated with battle. Found in Fallout 4 in 76, a dick doll is a rare find as it has the ability to heal the player of all addictions, regardless of how many and to what substances. It is inhaled and comes in a container that looks just like Jet, which I am sure has never caused any problems for anyone, ever. The chem not only removes the physical dependency of addiction, but the psychological component and the withdrawal symptoms as well. The only side effect noted is an in-game comment about how someone may feel dizzy or nauseated shortly after taking it. Of all the too good to be true things we have in the Fallout series, this has to be up there, since it is literally a wonder drug. In the real world, different drugs have different metabolic pathways and effects on the body. So if someone is interested in something that can help them curb their addiction, they have specific options based on what drugs they are currently taking. Using alcohol as an example, there is naltrexone, which is meant to decrease the pleasure and reward signals that alcohol induces, which can hopefully give people an extra incentive to stop drinking. Disulfurim is similar in that it induces headaches, nausea, and other unpleasant effects if one consumes alcohol while taking this drug. Neither of these would be a good analog to Addictol, since Addictol seems to work instantly to remove the addiction and the user suffers no withdrawal. So this is an example of biotech black magic when comparing it to anything we know of. Found in Fallout 4, X-111 is a very potent anti-radiation medicine that can be obtained by completing a fetch quest for senior scribe Naraya on the Pridwin where you give her blood samples. X-111 appears to be in pill form, unlike Radaway and more like Rad-X. However, the mechanism for removing radiation is not clear. In my previous video, I spoke of some medicines that remove certain radioactive elements from the body, but they do so slowly through natural bodily processes and only successfully target certain elements. This is likely an advanced version of those medicines that may be a combination of drugs that all target different radioactive isotopes to thoroughly rid the body of radiation, much like Radaway. The chem itself, while it has a higher potential for removing rads from the player, is a lot heavier than Radaway, so the potential benefits may not be worth it, especially on a survival playthrough. Interestingly, Scribe Naraya says that the name pays homage to the vault that the Soul Survivor came out of, Vault 111. What the X is for is anybody's guess though. I have also been trying to make sense of the bottle and why it looks the way it does, and the most I can come up with is that it is just a repurposed bottle with a faded label of whatever it used to contain. Fallout 76 introduces the Healing Salve, which is an ointment that is applied to the skin and regenerates HP. We have gone over healing medications many times in this video when going over stim packs and other related items, so I won't repeat that information again here. It is curious to note that while the stim packs take a bit of time to apply to the player because there is an injection animation, the ointment is instantaneous. I just find that funny since in reality, you would need to open the container and start rubbing it all over yourself, which would take a lot longer than a simple stim pack injection, and would be the most ridiculous thing to watch someone do in the middle of a gunfight after taking some damage. In Fallout 76, the so-called insect repellent is introduced. I say so-called because it doesn't actually repel insects and insect creatures, rather it reduces their damage by 15%, which in case you are wondering is not what repellent does. It comes in a mason jar and is crafted by taking various parts of insects and blending them together. 
There are many kinds of repellents, and most are derived from plants, since they have evolved many ways to ward off insects. However, I could not find any that were derived from insects themselves, so I don't know what to make of this chem. Found only in Fallout 76, Rad Shield is a concoction developed by Ella Ames and is stored in IV bags like Radaway. It lowers the amount of radiation the player receives, but unlike Rad X, it does not lower the chances of getting a mutation. This would seem to imply that it doesn't block radiation like Rad X, since the radiation is what causes the mutations. Or perhaps it blocks the more energetic forms of radiation, letting the less energetic forms affect the body. Although Rad Shield does stack with itself because of how radiation resistance is calculated, there are diminishing returns with each consecutive dose. As a bonus, Muti is a curious cam that is only found in Fallout Tactics, which has one specific purpose, and that is to mimic the attributes of super mutants. It is addictive, and I forgot to include it in my previous video, which is why it's getting a mention here. A hypodermic needle with a handle and push button injects a red fluid. The player experiences plus four to strength, endurance, minus four charisma, and intelligence as penalties. After two hours, the penalties change to minus two strength and minus two endurance. There's no real connection between this and FEV, as all it does is mimic some attributes of super mutants, and the player's appearance does not change accordingly. So, that covers all the cams of the Fallout series. Due to how long this video has taken me to produce, I will not be able to do a comment showcase. I am really sorry, but I will save the past video's comments for a longer showcase in my next video. Thank you all, and may you walk in Adam's glow.